Yeah, we gotta get it done, eh? Dinner on you. <laughs> Dinner on you. Pod host of the world. Pod pod host? Podcast. <laughs> My pleasure, bro. My pleasure anytime. How am I feeling? Yeah. I'm feeling very cold because we're freaking yeah. cold up here in the far. F- well, I don't know if Whangarei is the far, far north, but um, yeah, we're somewhere up north. Yeah. Don't know how far, but yeah. Who is my kawaii mai? Uh, oi te tuatahi, mi katika kia koe, e taku tungane, Will. Will, thanks to the gangster. Uh, kawaii, ko mai o hapana pa tōku ingoa, e huri tēnei no ngai tā manuhiri, rongo whakata waikato manio pa tō me te whanau apanu ya no hoki. Um, yeah, I'm just, I want to be young person trying to crack it in the journalism business alongside you and uh, 10 other of our mates, pretty much. Yeah, so... My upbringing, my upbringing. I mean, it's not exciting. I'm not going to, I'm just your typical um, country bumpkin from the East Coast who was born and bred in um, a small village just outside of Gisborne, 20 minutes outside of Gisborne, called Timuriwai. <laughs> um, yeah. The eldest of um, three girls in our um, family, plus my mum and dad. Um, plus a whole heap of cousins. Um, and my upbringing, uh, yeah, born and bred in the East Coast, went to a rural school. Um, then when I was in high school, moved up to Hamilton because my dad uh, got a job back in his hometown, um, Te Aumatu, and lived most of my high school years and my university years in Waikato, learning about that side. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward from there. Um, yeah, graduated from primary, graduated from high school, graduated uh, from uni, and now I'm just here trying to make it in the world of, yeah, journalism. <laughs> Um, yeah, comparing the big shift from Tamaki, um, oh, from Waikato to Tamaki, it's been a big culture shock, I'm not going to lie. Um, and what I mean by that is that it just reminded me that there's more than just one uh, diverse culture that we actually have within our country. Yeah. Uh, but that was the cool thing. I mean, I got, I was exposed to uh, other environments that I haven't been accustomed to, yeah. like um, learning more about our Tawana Nuyakiwa uh, brothers and sisters, like yourself, um, my Tongan brother. <laughs> love that, love that. Mati Tonga all day. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just knowing that um, there's not only one diverse voice here with our in our country that we need to share and um, hear more from, but there's many of us 
And although they label us as a minority, when we come and make up the numbers, we make the majority of what this country should stand for. So, yeah, that's me. Like, I actually can't rem pinpoint the exact moment of when we actually first interacted, but when we first clicked, I remembered, and it was when you handed me over that note. <laughs> when we were asked, I don't know what the question was at the time, um, I think it was like, what did we feel at the time or something, anyway, and you said, you said on the note... I feel, and it was that, it was, so we got asked this question at Tifano, and then we had to give back, how, how do we feel about it, and Will only had on his note, rooted, <laughs> so when, when Will was asked, how do you feel, and of course, the bro says too much, so he can't compact it into one word, so he wrote it on a note and gave it to me, I said, Will feels rooted. <laughs> and that's 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 what it was but for some reason everyone cracked up and I was just like what that's exactly how we felt I just didn't get it you were being honest <laughs> but now that I look back at it yeah it was a bit naughty <laughs> uh, highlights about our bond highlights about our bond is that um, yeah. yeah, and and that's the one thing that um that's a highlight for me is that you always like you and I always say to each other, yeah. you're my brother. I'm um, your little, your little sister. I was like, little sister? Okay. I mean, just because your birthday is before mine, I don't know if I'm... But, no, but in that sense, in that sense, yeah. Um, the, the feeling is very mutual. I think from here on in, I think I'll always be calling you my bro. Yeah. Because it, it, we've, I think we've transcended to more than just being mates. Mm. Yeah, the one thing I think I've learned most from you is that, and you've always been very straightforward and to the point with it, is that you don't like to be babied because you're not, you're 24 turning 25. You're a grown ass man. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of that, I've. Um, Learned a lot, but yeah, and just that in general, it's just reminded me actually, you're all just like the rest of us mm. with a little bit extra. Mm. Um, but that shouldn't give us the right to baby you because you don't know when you do. Mm. I mean, just because you don't have a simple th thing as what I'm doing right now doesn't mean you don't have the capacity to do better things or the same things that we do. <laughs> and if we're all honest, you're actually better than the majority of the class. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what's a question from from me? Okay, okay. Um, I guess what have been some of the things that we've that I've shared with you that you would um. I, not well, no, yeah. So, what are the things that I've? What are some of the things I've shared that have enticed you to learn more about? I mean, I already know the answer because you've got a dictionary about it. But I mean, yeah, yeah. 
And that's one of the things that I think colonization, well, not just colonization, but um, urbanization has unfortunately factored in as well, is that there's, it's made a separation between us and our Pacifica whanau, or like the, when, you know, because, yeah, people always say there's just Māori and then there's Pacifica um, but really, we're all one, and we always have to not only remind um, um, our treaty allies, but yeah. even ourselves that as well, because now we're playing into that kind of way of thinking. So being in this um, program, it's reminded me that we, we need to reshape people's point of views of saying them and you yeah. or them and they. When actually no, we're one people. Um, mm. That's why we say Polynesian. We don't say, you know, Pacifica. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, when we when mm. yeah. yeah, us as as a diverse community um, speak on behalf of mm. ourselves and each other. We never say, mm. yeah, we're all one. So. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> I think for Aotearoa as a whole, it's important to understand, even because even that word Māori, it's a labelisation that's been given by colonisers that have come and settled here in Aotearoa. Um, for us, it's always been where tangata whenua. Um, so in terms of just knowing that, you get a better understanding as to why we have such a connection, such a why we advocate so strongly for this whenua. Um, because we know everything is connected. And the same is, um, it goes both ways when it comes to talking about us as Polynesians. Yeah. We know that everything is connected. Um, a and, you know, we also have to play a part in that and being reciprocal in that sense. Um, because when you think about it going back in history, uh, we have our Fano from Te Moana Nui Akiwa, that are actually our, our tuakana, so our, our um, yeah, yeah, our, our elders in the sense. So, so, yeah, I think that's, we go way back in terms of that sense. But in terms of knowing why it's important to learn about all of our cultures is because we always say that there is... Um, so the land is me, I am the land. A and we, it's always that. It's never um, focusing on learning about me. It's learning about mm. nature and, and all yeah. that comes with it because at the end of the day, if we didn't have the land, then we wouldn't be able to survive or, or exist. Um, so, uh, so it's knowing about that high regard, why we make it in such a high regard. And, yeah, yeah that whānau... Yeah. That is a great question. Mm. Yeah, I think for me, the three people I would want to sit down with. One um, is at the top of my list, my nana, uh, Marini yeah. Tapanapa. Yeah. She was the co-founder of Te Wananga Aotearoa, which is yeah. the second highest um, and well-known tertiary education in this country. Um, she was an amazing wahine. Um, fought for the rights of um, the importance of our kids uh, getting their education uh, in, in, in a way that excluded them from learning outside the box and, and in, a t um, in an institution that clearly didn't cater for them because um, when it did cater for them, it was just uh, prepping them to be in a workforce that only 
categorize them in three things, which was to be a teacher, um, to be a trades worker or tradesman, um, and to be a nurse, for example. Those are just three minimal examples, but nothing else. You were never to be anything else. The second one would have to be, I was talking about it with my uncles the other day, Georgina Byer. If you don't know who Georgina Byer was, she was the first transgender MP, mm. um, not only for New Zealand but in the world. Um, she recently passed and mm. she um, had a very amazing life um, that I really wanted to tap into because she talked on the voices of um, the LGBTQ plus community, um, sex workers community, um, and, and other things that I think just played a huge part in terms of the shaping of this country. Um, third person, a third person is such a good... Oh, the third person I would want to sit and have a conversation with would be um, Lady Te Araki Nui, uh, Te Atairangi Kahu, uh, who was the um, late uh, Māori queen, um, and she was just an amazing, again, an amazing, humble woman all round. Um, and yet she had this kind of finesse and grace and class that you rarely see nowadays or is really um, embedded in certain people nowadays because we're just so um, digitally inclined and, yeah, we're, we're kind of losing our um, human interaction skills um, in that way. So, you know, she had that kind of sophistication women, all three strong individuals, all three that helped um, and made an impact in the shaping of this country, again. Mm. 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 They all did though, I don't want to do anyone alive for some reason, apparently, well, mm. some must mm. not be as good. Mm. That is a great question, again, from the journalist, <laughs> Sankster the Gangster. <laughs> um, um, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise to me actually that I wanted to venture into this kind of career. But um, to my surprise, it, and you're the same as well, uh, it's come very naturally. Um, mm. And that's just because, again, with um, us as uh, descendants of Timor and Nuiaki, mm. or ju uh, just in terms of Polynesia as a whole. Mm people of Polynesia as a whole, um, we're just natural storytellers and that's not just from something we've said, it's something that's been repeatedly um, fed back to us from other journalists uh, that are within uh, the media and, and, you know, not within the media as well. So um, it's a common thing that's been confirmed and the reason, so I, I guess going straight into it. Um, mm. uh, it wasn't my first intention and my first mm. career pathway, but mm. but it's gone as something that I am now very passionate about. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the uh, also the thing that made me question whether or not this was a good pathway to go on with um, is thinking in my mind like what do I have to say yeah. that is worth even telling? Yeah. Uh, but it's just shown that within our various communities and things that we're yeah. involved in. There's a lot that we can share that should be told that isn't been brought hasn't been brought to the surface because um, mm. you know I mean as journalists um, that have seen experienced journalists go throughout their career um, journalists get a bad rap mm. uh, 
mainstream media especially, but we have an opportunity an opportunity through this course to change that mm. and change the way we can control the narrative. Yeah. yeah. What do I want to achieve or what advice do I have? Yeah. What advice? In terms of people that are looking for uh, mm. just anything? Yeah. Um, I would say um, if I was to give advice to little minds right now, little minds right now, I would tell that girl, <laughs> like, go. Um, I'd tell her to literally carry on being your crazy, weird, out-the-gate self because clearly there may not have been a market um, for it at that time but yeah. there will be yeah. and you will make something out of it and it will be something no one else has ever thought of before and they want um, that would be my first thing second thing is to um, never ever in your life ever again doubt yourself you will have so many voices in your head young and old saying that what you're doing is not important or what you're doing is something I don't even care about but really that's one out of the majority and the majority wins every time um but in saying that to never be a people pleaser like I'm in a stage of my life now where I know who I am yeah. I know what I want and I know where I want to go and that I'm I know I'm going to get there um yeah. and I think that's what I want to share and give back to my people in my community back home is that um, if I could just tell every little girl, every little person in the world um, one thing that they should always hold dear to is to never doubt themselves because um, there's only one of you in the world and there'll never be another one of you ever again Muri mm. Yeah, we gotta go to dinner. Eh? Dinner on you. <laughs> dinner on you. Pod host of the world. Pod pod host. Podcast host. Host with the most. Oh, it's my pleasure, bro. Something else to the top. Jesus. <laughs> 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 <laughs>